guys, welcome back to Sandy Boy Reviews. I'm your host, Stanley. Thank you so much for taking the time to check out my channel and to talk about your favorite horror films and mine. I am now officially 36 years old. It was my birthday last weekend. I am basically the Crypt Keeper and I've accepted the fact that I am going to, from this point forward, fall apart right in front of you. Anyway, welcome back. Hi, etc., etc. I hope everyone's having a good June so far. I wanted to take a little bit of time to share some of the gifts that I got from some of my viewers and some of my friends because a lot of them happen to be horror themed. First up is from frequent viewer and new friend, Sean. He was nice enough to get me this really beautiful oil painting that is going to look wonderful on my wall of terror. It is all of the horror icons. I mean, check it out. This is so cool. Thank you very much, Sean. I love this and I look forward to adding it to my art collection. This is so neat. Thank you so much. A lot of you might not know that I was once married and my dreaded ex decided to keep a lot of my belongings during our divorce. And one of them was something I held very close to my heart. It was a box set of a television show from the 80s hosted by Shelley Duvall called Fairy Tale Theater. And I was heartbroken that this was something I was not getting back. But my friend Bill managed to track it down. And when he gave this to me a couple of days ago during our lunch, along with a stick of dragon blood red sage, I'm a big sager, I burst into tears. So. Bill, thank you so much for this. If you guys haven't seen Fairy Tale Theater, I urge you watch it immediately. These are some of the coolest, spookiest, most nostalgia ridden episodes of television that you might ever see. I know that some of them are available on YouTube and they're hosted by Shelley Duvall. Perfection, they're just perfection. So Bill, thank you so much for this. I will treasure this and make sure that it never leaves my collection ever again. My very close and dear friend and talented author Magnolia White got me this top 120 horror movies trivia book that goes hand in hand with my channel and what it is that I'm doing. And it covers movies like Rosemary's Baby and Possession and Drag Me to Hell and American Werewolf in London and a whole bunch of other films. And I'm really excited to delve into this. MW, thank you for this, my love. I'm very excited about it. Then we have this that will look much better in a frame once I get one for it. Mm-hmm. It has daddies of horror. This is from my best friend, Ashley, and I love this so much. So thank you, Ashley, my little spike. So yeah, guys, all in all, I had a very good birthday and I appreciate everybody that wished me well. And thank you for being a friend. Anyway, on with it, you guys. Have a seat. I'm already seated. I took that back, didn't I? <laughs> We are here today to talk about the new Shudder slash IFC Midnight release, Watcher, starring Micah Monroe from It Follows. It was released at Sundance earlier this year and then to us civilians into theaters on June 3rd. And I caught a late screening of it on opening night with the Happy Horror Time boys and a couple of other guys without knowing much about it. And I've said it before and I've said it again that sometimes that's the way to do it. And yo, I was pleasantly surprised. Watcher had me from the beginning until its final frame. And I left the theater feeling uneasy, squeamish, and ultimately satisfied, which is kind of hard these days with the movies that I've been seeing in theaters like men. What? I wouldn't say this was a fun movie necessarily, but it was gloomy, it was sad at times, and it was creepy, character driven, and it gave off such an impending feeling of dread throughout its 91 minute running time that by the time it was over, I was just, pretty much exhausted. Watcher is about a young couple named Julia and Francis who are married and they move to Bucharest. Bucharest? <laughs> they move to Europe. <laughs> so Francis can take a marketing job. She's American. Francis's parents are Romanian, so he is very fluent in the language. They move into this enormous, super spacious apartment with very big wall length windows and very large ceilings that looks over to another building across from them. And Julia can see the neighbors across the way and the neighbors can see her if they choose to. Francis works all day and doesn't come home until way late into the evening, leaving Julia alone for the majority of the day to wander the city and frequent the coffee shops and to learn the language of her new neighbors. It doesn't take very long for Julia to realize, A, she's very lonely, B, she misses smoking cigarettes, and C, that there's someone watching her from the apartment building across the way from them, or maybe not. Hello, darling. 
Any reason in particular you're standing in the dark? And then we discovered that there's a killer on the loose, known simply as the spider. The spider is decapitating women in the neighborhood, often. Julia becomes increasingly paranoid, deciding on her own that the man that has been watching her from across the apartment building window is the killer, but nobody believes her. Francis, the police, her neighbor, nobody. Pretty soon she takes it upon herself to figure out who the identity of this man is, the man that has been watching her from this window from across the apartment building. What it is he might want from her, if he might be the spider, whew, you guys, Watcher is good. It's suspenseful. It's got those wide shots. So many riffs from classic Polanski films like Rosemary's Baby and Micah Monroe. Man, she gives such a quiet, spot-on performance as Julia and lets her big Margaret Keene eyes do most of the acting. I literally could not take my eyes off of her, which would have been kind of hard considering she's in every shot of the movie. She played off of the small cast fabulously, more notably Byrne Gorman, who plays the Watcher, I guess and her scenes with him are so electrifying. There's a specific scene closer to the climax. It involves a plastic shopping bag and what may or may not be in it. And it is so goddamn scary. You're not sure what you're supposed to be seeing. It's a clever little trick that the director plays on you and it just works so great. There's a lot of little tricks like this in the movie that just work so great. They just don't make movies like this much anymore. And I just loved it. It's like old time movie making. And I definitely enjoyed the relationship between Julia and Francis too. I've been in very similar situations. I moved to Juneau, Alaska when I was very young with an ex-boyfriend and it was basically like moving to a foreign country. I had no idea what I was doing, no idea what I was in for. I related to Julia on a multitude of levels. It's really frustrating when you want people to side with you, especially the people that are closest to you and you just can't get that. To me, it wasn't a straight up horror film. It was more of a drawn out, suspenseful thriller. It wasn't until the last five minutes or so that it went full blown horror. To wrap this up, I can't really say anything negative about this movie. I will say that it's probably not for everybody. And that's probably because of the pacing of it. Not everyone can appreciate a movie that takes almost the entire length of it to get to where it's going. But I can, I can appreciate that kind of film. And I really loved the seven-ish vibes that this film was dipped in. The somber score by Nathan Halpern also really contributed in a very effective way. And also I have really loved seeing Micah Monroe evolve into a scream queen. I loved her in It Follows. I loved her in The Guest. I just love her as an actress. So on Stanny's stab -a meter I give this five stabs. <laughs> I will watch this again. I will recommend this to anybody out there. And I urge those who haven't seen it to see it. So what do you say, guys? Did you watch Watcher? Do you plan to see Watcher? Let me know what you think. Leave some comments. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter. And if you haven't, you guys, please subscribe. I love you for it. Thank you guys for being here and checking out this review. And take care. Bye.